Hi you guys, welcome back to another first impression video. If you're new here, this is the video series where I take a look at an entire sewing pattern collection, whether that is an entire indie patterns catalog or a new release from the big five. And I kind of just give my first impression thoughts on all the new patterns that come out. That's everything from fit issues that I notice, uh, fabrication choices that I want to point out um and just kind of like overall design and just my just general opinion about the patterns themselves today we're gonna be taking a look at the most recent McCall's patterns um these came out a little bit ago somehow I don't know I got new look up before I got this up so not new look I'm sorry no me new new look hasn't come out yet I don't think for spring Butterick and Vogue, those will come shortly. So first up, we have this Mrs. Dress and Sash. Pullover dresses have placket, collar, sleeve, and link variations. View C has front buttons on placket, separate optional sash included. All right, so we have just a little baby stand collar, um, a little half placket, uh, forward shoulder seam, I'm thinking, with some gathers here. And then like either a sleeve band, a larger sleeve band, a wider sleeve band, or a full sleeve. And it does look like they made this out of something somewhat drapey, but maybe a little bit crisp. So like a cotton lawn, possibly, or some kind of cotton blend is what I'm assuming their version was made from. I kind of really like the version without the belt, but I'm in this phase of my life where I'm just going with kind of looser, more casual looks anyways. This feels a little bit more office-y, a little bit more like church, a little bit more like a date, whereas this is like throw on some sneakers and run to Target, um, which is just a little bit more my vibe these days. Yeah, not much more to be said about this. Um, we're going to get maybe a couple pictures of the model. That's the same first one. Yeah, here's the back. Okay, you can really get a sense for the lightweight um, drapey fabric. So we have a little bit of gathers here. And then again, being pulled into the um, waist with this belt. And it looks like they made um, thread carriers, which is nice if they included that detail on how to make that in the pattern that is. Also a blind hem. I think a blind hem, that's awesome. I couldn't tell if that was it or not, but I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, this this design is not anything revolutionary, nothing new. You know, you had a little grown on sleeve um, collar, no collar, placket, no placket. You've probably got some version of this if you've been sewing for a minute. Um, but they suggest, and again, I always like to point out that they like to suggest fabrics on the pattern that correspond with the season that they are releasing the pattern in. So because this is a spring pattern, they're going to really only suggest spring pa spring fabrics, but you can make this out of, <laughs> honestly, this pattern specifically, just about any fabric you can think of. It would be great in winter fabrics like corduroy, denim, obviously, um, summery fabrics. You could do it out of an eyelet with maybe like some underlining or like a little slip underneath. You could do it out of what do they recommend? Chalet, cotton blends, linen, poplin. But yeah, you can do wools. You can do the lightest weight, you know, those silky types. You could do this dress out of just about anything. Um, notions wise, you just need some interfacing and buttons. Yeah, depending on which version you make determines how many buttons you need. I do think A, I do, hold on, let me go back to A. I think there might be a typo here. Oh, so if these have the hidden placket, I think the hidden placket only has two buttons and the exposed, um, I'm not sure because this one only says two buttons for view B. So that means view A, the striped one, has no buttons and that just kind of flaps open. That's kind of cool. Not, again, revolutionary, but like, I don't know, I guess never thought of a half placket with no buttons. It's usually either like a V-neck placket or 
not, you know? Okay, well, anyways. And then for, for B is just two buttons for the sleeve, and then C has five buttons because you have the five going down the front. Interesting. If you wanted it to be buttoned, you could obviously do the instructions for the buttoned placket. But these two here don't have any buttons. Love that. Okay. 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26 on the size range. That puts us at a bust. Yeah, you're going to base this off of your high bust measurement. So 31 and a half to 48. And then there's gajillions of these. Lots and lots and lots and lots of ease. Um, 12 inches, 11 and a half, 12 inches in the bust alone. Um, more than 20 in the waist. So this is probably one of those where you want to size down as well. Um, you could easily, easily get the same look uh, with 8 inches of ease in the bust, not 12. Um, so maybe size down a couple sizes. And again, use your high bust measurement because that'll make sure that the, it fits in the shoulder and acts like a hanger and then everything else hangs off of it. Okay, so that's the little first little dress. Then we have... this little romper. Now this is just screaming my name. Wrap front romper with sleeve, collar, and pocket variations. Has shorts with hidden front zipper. Oh, an option of three skirt styles that wrap in front. Oh, I really love this. This is a little bit more like a skirt romper. You know, a romper to me looks like shorts in the front. This looks, this is like a what would be a dress and a romper portmanteau? Portmanteau, is that how you say when you combine the words? Portman, portman something. Because um, it looks like a dress in the front and looks like a, like shorts in the back. I am obsessed with this pleated version. Not necessarily with the cargo pocket, but love this pleat. Love the pleats here. Also love the different uses of hardware. That's a really fun way to use like some D-rings and like, what is that? Like a carabiner? But you could also do like a, more like a traditional uh, slider as well. We have bust darts, we have waist darts. It is low cut. It is low cut in the front. And depending on which of these hardware choices you choose, there's something here that's keeping it tacked down. I don't know if that's a snap. We'll see in the notions section. Um, you could move that over and this would cross over more. Um, but then that, then this would be weird, right? So if you're going to want to try and raise this, your best option is to not do it by cheating the wrap and doing it the cheat way, but to actually go in and draw this in, um, flatter and make it wider. So this would actually come over more, but in this whole line would be less angled and more flat. All right, then we have the options of, and I also kind of like the little collar, how it's not really a collar. It's just kind of like a, a flap or like a panel. Um, and you have the no collar option. And then you also have the collar with the, um, with the, what is that thing called? Like a lapel, like a lapel collar. Um, so some cute options there, but I think, I don't think any of them have a collar stand. So this is a little bit misleading. This makes it look like there's a collar stand. And I really don't think that there is one. Um, it, it would be a little bit more flat than that, but short sleeves, long sleeves are your options there. The length looks good. The fit on her looks really good. The waist seam is at the waist. Everything's being like fitted really nicely. The sleeve isn't too long. Like, Yeah. This one looks really, really good. The only, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit long in the shoulder, but that's, it's not that big of a deal. I honestly don't even know if I would bother changing it unless you know for sure that you're really narrow in the shoulders. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really bother, but yeah, really cute. Love the pleated version so much. Okay, so here's the back. We have... Just some darts, it looks like, in the back. The sleeve looks good. The fit looks good. 
I'm second guessing myself on the collar stand now. There might be one. That does seem to be standing up, right? Um, the waist is a little bit low in the back. That happens. And then you have your waist darts here also in the short. And then the short itself, probably if she moved around a bunch, would be giving her a wedgie. I do think that the curve here, um, or the, I guess the crotch length in the back isn't quite long enough for her. Um, and it is a slim, it's a slim little short. So if you've got, you know, wider bum, you're going to want to do a full seat adjustment probably. Okay. So cotton blends, crepes, poplin, stretch wovens. That's a good way to get around some fit issues in the bum. Um, but I would also consider like Chino. I would consider linen, especially a linen blend. Um, yeah. And a lot more blends. Like where's the rayon blends? Where's the rayon poplin, for example? That would also be really cute. Um, so you can go lighter weight. You can go more structured. Um, a balance of the two, if you're going to make this sleeve, maybe more on the structured side, if you're going to make the one with the pleats. Okay. And then, so an invisible zipper. I kind of love how that's like tucked into the center front and you can't really see it. That's really cool. Um, to, okay, so these are depending on how you want to close your, yeah, and it doesn't say anything about a snap, but it's very clear, right, that there's a snap. Like, that's not doing that on its own. Um, so they have a snap or a hook and eye or something that they did not list in the notion section. Invisible zipper. D-rings, swivel hook, D-ring, and elastic. So, um, so yeah, make sure you have something that's going to kind of hold it a little bit closed. Because I guess the problem is, oh boy, I guess the problem is that this little tag thing is so low. Like, why isn't this up here? Maybe that would be all you'd need to do. Well... This one would be a little bit tricky to do that. But these where you just have the little tabs, why aren't we just putting the tabs at the waist? Something to consider. Something to think about. Yep. Okay, so then we have sizing. All right, so this is a size 4 to 12 and 14 to 22. So definitely on the lower end, lower end of their size range. Um, maybe, maybe there's a women's version of this. We will see as we keep looking through the new collection. Um, but that gives you a, let's look at the waist here, 22 inch waist up to 37. Um, so I barely fit into this. I'm a you know, pretty solid mid-size girl, maybe the kosh. The last time I went shopping ready to wear, it was at a thrift store and I was anywhere between a 14, well, a 12 and a 16, honestly, in pants and stuff. So I was kind of all over the map, but um, that's where I am. So if you're smaller than that, you should be good to go. Um, larger than that, let's hope for a women's version. That gives you, yeah, there's two inches of ease in the waist. That makes perfect sense. Um, there's about four, three and a half or four in the bust. That also makes sense. And then the hip, there's not that much, four and a half. So um, if you're curvy, like a pair where the hip is your widest part, um, you're probably, like I said, definitely going to want to do a full seat adjustment and make sure you have enough room in the back for your curves. All right, let's see quickly if... There is a women's version. I don't see one. I actually only see one women's pattern. Wow. Okay. All right. That's disappointing. Um, next, we have women's, misses and women's. So, okay. Technically, there's two now. Knit top, short, and pants. Easy to sew sleeveless or long sleeve knit top has fold over turtleneck and pairs either with pull on knit shorts, culottes, or pants with wide waistband, seeming detail, and optional front pack pockets okay 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 <laughs> I have thoughts I I get where they're going right there is this element I think they're calling it like quiet luxury 
where you're finding sets, like even knit sets, maybe made out of cashmere or some kind of cashmere blend, um, luxurious fabrics, usually solids, and you're getting like a, a set out of them. Um, that is very on trend right now and ready to wear. And I think this is their version of that. The top, I absolutely love. Um, we are getting a little bit of a drag line or a pretty significant drag line actually here from her bust point, making me think it's a little bit too small in the bust, but it is knit. It does need to be a little bit fitted. So I'm kind of just going to look the other way and pretend I don't see that. <laughs> um, if you wanted to get rid of it, it would be a matter of making it a little bit bigger through here, but then it would also be looser fitting. Um, so I guess it's, one I always forget that saying half of a dozen is six one half of another or something whatever that thing is um the the pant is where they're losing me um it's a little dated with this fitted flared crop uh, I appreciate that we have three pant options right we have this D is what she's wearing. We have C, which is the short, and we have E, which is the wide flare. I just wish maybe instead of the wide, I'm sorry, maybe instead of this shortened flared version, they would have given us a, either a tapered like cigarette, or I'm sorry, not a cigarette pant because we don't talk about that on this channel, a uh, pencil, pencil pant, a, um, a narrow pencil pant, or even like more of a legging. I just feel like this is not proportional, like proportion speaking wise, it's not very flattering on really anybody. And then you throw on giant patch pockets on your mid thigh and that just, that's even worse. So I think some elements of this are a little bit confusing, um, but if you start removing the pockets, um, Consider this flare to the floor. That would be really elegant. Or even like the shorts option would make it a little bit more casual. But I do think there's a place for shorts like this. And then this one, if you remove the flare and just have it be straight down and then maybe ankle length, um, I think would have done, would have just looked a little bit more approachable for different body types. Because this is a women's pattern too. So there's the top, kind of like a muscle tee. I could see you making this out of everything from like those cashmere sweater knit type of material to even like a mesh. I can see it out of a mesh with like some kind of cute bralette underneath. Um, so lots of different options there. Sorry, Biscuit is chewing her toy literally by the microphone. Let's see if we can get her to do that on the floor. Okay, um, there's the long sleeve version. Equally as cute. The knit short really has my mind going. I want to know how narrow this is. And then that's the version she was wearing. See, hers had more of a fit than flare. This feels a little bit more straight, like flared from the hip, not flared from the thigh. Um, and those are just beautiful. I could see myself throwing those on. Make those out of stretch denim, you guys. You know, make your own jegging, basically. I wonder what the stretch percentage is. They're not going to tell us here, which is super annoying. Um, or even, you know how, like, just give us the stretch gauge right here. Put it on one or the other, right? When we're shopping online and they're doing so much to push online sales right now, make online shopping easier for us. <laughs> All right. So they're suggesting specifically cotton knit French cherry sweatshirt fleece. But again, depending on the stretch gauge, there's some pretty stretchy jegging fabric out there. Um, maybe not ponty, but um, definitely um, something with like a higher percentage of elastane in it, maybe even like 10%, and you could definitely get like a, a legging vibe from it, or I'm sorry, a jegging vibe from it. But um, like I said, I can also mention it, I can also see it in some sweatshirt, nope, some sweater knits, some like cashmere blends, yeah, there's a lot of really fun things out there outside of these three categories that um, the whole set would work for, top and bottom. All right, so 10 to 18 and then 20 to 28 and then 30 to 38 is our size range. That gives us 
gosh, I guess we're looking at the waist of the pant here. The top is loose fitting, right? So you're going to use your upper bust measurement for that. The bust also has 10, nine and a half inches of ease in it. The waist has 10 inches of ease. That's the top. This has to be the top because the bottoms are more fitted. And then the hip they're giving also 10 inches of ease. And they don't separate the hip ease for short and pants. So it must flare out equally for all three. That's an, I'm going to get this one. I think I'm going to pick this one up. This is one of the first ones I've seen in a minute where I'm like more, just really curious more than anything. But then I also have all these sweater knits that I would love to use up. So yeah, I think it could be really, really cool. And you don't have to do the turtleneck if you're like, if you don't like those or if it's, you know, you could leave that off and just turn it under, finish it the same way you finish the sleeve, I guess. Okay. Now we have, oh boy. Okay. So Mrs. Knit Top and Leggings. All right. We can absolutely see the direction they're going in here. These little like Crop tops are everywhere, matching leggings and everything, but this is a little bit of like the cheaper looking version. It, the sleeve is not fitted enough. Uh, we'll talk about it. This says crop knit top with short or long sleeves and leggings in two lengths with seaming details and optional color blocking. Beauty leggings have front leg slits. Okay, so having it where there's this casing, um, is just not my favorite application for getting that look. In my opinion, you should be using a stretch fabric that has enough recovery to where it just like a sports bra, it just hugs to you and you don't need to do, there shouldn't be any gathers. The sleeve A is twisting, B it's really loose fitting. It's like, this is a blouse sleeve and this is not a blouse, you know? So that's why it's looking a little bit like just something's off. And then the same thing with these leggings, there's like the chintziest little quarter inch elastic here. Like, I don't know about you, but that's not going to work for me. We need to have like an inner facing with like a big band of elastic in it. Um, I'll double check the notions to make sure that that's not what's happening in here. And this isn't just a top stitch. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is just like a little baby, baby, baby elastic. Also too long in the rise, probably because they're falling down as she's moving around modeling because um, this elastic is not enough for her. And then we have these little side pockets. You couldn't put anything in them though because they're going to pull down. There's nothing holding them up. Then you have this seam here, right? Comes all the way out, back down the front of the knee and then opens up at the ankle. I do like an ankle slit, but there have been so many other versions of patterns like this that are way, way, way better than this one. Um, the line drawings are going to deceive people. It's going to look awesome, but I mean, this is the same thing as this. So it either needs to be loose fitting here or tighter all around. Um, and then you've just got to address this waistband issue here. And then B is the same bodice, just has a long sleeve with a flare to it. And then C has the color blocking option without the flare. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that that's bad, right? So this looks like, and I'm assuming this band here does have some negative ease in it but probably not enough. Um, this needs to be like, like a super, super strong stretch material in order to hold this to your body. It needs to be almost like compression in a way. And that's just not what this is giving at all. Um, this whole part looks okay. I mean, there, of course there's that right there, but that's hard to tell if that's happening because she's just standing on this one leg. Yep. And then the, this backside seam twists around again. I don't know if that's supposed to be on the side now or is it a twist around to the back? I don't know. Too hard to tell. Let's see what the line drawings do. Yeah. So the line drawings do make it look like 
it's supposed to go to the center back, which it clearly is not doing. So, yeah, just some problems with this one, which is unfortunate. I get where they're going. It just, execution's just not, not it. Um, athletic knits, four-way stretch knits. Yeah, those are, the, especially the four-way stretch knits, um, they, they can be very, very light weight in terms of the support area. Um, and I just don't think they're great for this. You would need, that some athletic knits can, can achieve what we're trying to achieve here. You'd probably need to size down though and really, really like suck you in. Um, so let's see, we're talking about with ease here, we've got zero inches of bust ease, which again, it should probably be negative. Um, and then hip ease, why is there 11 inches? No, that's the waist. Sorry. Why? Okay. So positive ease in the hip as well of about two, well, three and a half two and a half to three and a half inches. I think I'm not doing that math right. But, um, again, the leggings shouldn't have any positive ease at all. Notions wise, we're working with for view a, the elastic band under the bodice is three quarters of an inch. View B has one inch elastic. So this one's actually wider elastic. That makes no sense. And then for the pants, yeah, it's a three eighths inch elastic at the top there. That's just not going to cut it for most people. You just, I think you'll just be pulling on it all day. You'll be pulling the pants up. You'll be pulling the top down and certainly you can't work out in it and jump around. Like, so I don't know. Okay. We have a Mrs. Loose fit jumpsuit and sash. Oh, here for this lounging comfort and style in this loose fit easy to sew jumpsuit sized small to 2x so they're calling it misses but it really is that's their women's model so all in one size okay all in one envelope i mean that's cool jumpsuit has front button sleeve variations and side pockets wear with or without a sash all right so they gave her kind of a dressier version we've got the v-neck I'm pretty sure hers still has this little above the bust, up like upper bust seam line. It might be a little low on her, but then you got the button placket cinching at the waist. They gave her the little banded sleeve and then this really pretty wide leg. These are, you're going to be seeing, especially versions like this, you're going to be seeing everywhere. Free People has been on this for years and it is catching on. They are selling out all the time and now all the boutiques are picking them up. Um, these, these are, you're going to, these are going to be everywhere this spring, summer, and fall for sure. Um, okay. So there she is again. This one they made look kind of like pajamas, which is a missed opportunity, I think. They could have gone, like, really boho with it and made it look a lot cooler. Same thing with the sample. Like, this jumpsuit for work thing has been done to death. They, In terms of, like, styling and and choosing a lane where they could really, like, sell a bunch of these, this, this professional version of it, while it works, and it's a perfectly reasonable version to make, it's just not hitting the mark in terms of what these jumpsuits could look like and what they what they do look like when you're out in the store. So it looks like just a center back seam. I don't even know if there's a zipper back there. Maybe. Um, yeah, the back looks pretty decent. I mean, maybe a little bit low in the crotch depth or the, sorry, the rise. But if you go on Free People and search jumpsuits there, you'll get a better idea of how these are being styled and being worn um, these days. Okay, cotton blends, cotton lawn, gauze, silkies. Um, I would certainly add linen to that list, chambray. Any lightweight to midweight woven or knit you're seeing these out of a lot of like sweater knit type material too. Like really, really comfortable stuff. Um, 
there's it's not fitted right it doesn't fit your body anywhere um so it's the stretch percentage of the knit doesn't really matter um if you're super concerned about that you can always size down but i think you're going to be putting interfacing in this band and maybe even the sleeve and you'll be you'll be set but lots of different fabric options for these um, okay, so you need your buttons for the button placket and then single fold bias tape for the sleeveless version and then small to 2x. Okay, what does that mean exactly? So if we're going off of our upper bust only, which is really the only fitted part of this whole thing, that's a 31 and a half inch bust up to 48. Yeah, I mean, they're saying that's a 26. So not, I see why it's not a women's pattern, but it is more inclusive than most of their women's um i think we normally go 8 to 18 no 8 1 2 3 4 8 to 16 and 18 to 20 1 2 3 4 yeah i don't know maybe that is the same as they normally do usually there's five sizes and this one has 10 so maybe it is the same um ease wise yeah, I mean, look at these numbers. 30, 30 inches of ease in the bust. My gosh, 20-something in the waist and 20-something in the hip. So um, that's aggressive. That's aggressive. So if your fabric is a little bit more structured, you're definitely going to want to size down. Um, maybe two to three sizes. Um, you're going to want to use your high bust measurement, your upper bust measurement. Um yeah, because that's that's very, very oversized. For the silky stuff where all the fabric kind of falls in on you, still, it's a lot. You could probably size down one. Um, but because it's alphanumeric, you're really, when you're sizing down from a medium to a small, you're really sizing down two sizes every time. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of ease here. So proceed with caution in terms of, in terms of that. If you want to play around with ease, what, what ease you like what is your envisioning you can get my fast fit worksheet on my website inside the hem.com and it will help you calculate the ease on your body with your body measurements not these arbitrary body measurements but your body measurements so if you're like no i really only want 10 inches of ease in the bust it'll tell you what size to bake i wonder too if that's how they were able to use their plus size model because it is so roomy. Like if they made her a 2X and she normally wears like the third is size 30 in their um, numeric sizing. Maybe that's how because it's just so oversized. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that's roomy. That's really roomy. And I hope people aren't discouraged if they make it and they don't consider ease and they, you know, randomly pick their size and they're swimming in it. Oh, there could be issues with that. Maybe that's one of the ones that I will do for a sew along and really the episode zero, break that out into a whole, make that most of the sew along is the, maybe I could do like a fit along instead of a sew along. What about a fit along? You guys would like that, right? All right. Now we're getting into, we're rounding, getting close to the end here because we're getting into vintage patterns and kind of like the craft, crafty type of patterns, but this is a dress tunic pants and panties okay 1970s dress tunic and pants sewing pattern they left the panties off back zippered dress or tunic with puff sleeves have two piece button trimmed collar short sleeves have elastic and casing long sleeve have elastic and upper and lower casings okay pants have elastic in casing no mention of panties is that a typo because that's really kind of funny um, so you get this little like choker thing and then your scoop neck and then these, I will say that the, anytime I've ever made a pattern that has these long seams to it and they're all in one with no horizontal seam at all, super flattering, super flattering on every body type. Um, so that's kind of cute. And then you get this puff sleeve with this elastic or you get one that has the elastic at the bicep and then also at the wrist. And then I think the pants probably have an elastic waist as well. You're not going to get panties with this. <laughs> I don't know what that says, panties. That's why I was like, um, interesting. Maybe in case this is too short. Like, I don't know. 
Oh, wait, what's this? There is a little something something, but it's more like shorts than panties. And I'm assuming you wear them like bloomers underneath the short dress. Interesting. Okay. Okay, I can get behind this. Shally crepe dotted Swiss knitted velvet uh Syrah voile wool or synthetic jersey. Wow, Shally crepe dotted Swiss. Dotted Swiss is a cotton pretty stable fabric. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. It is pretty thin. So maybe that makes it not as structured. Yeah, no, it is pretty lightweight. Yeah, I'm in, I'm surprised they're going so lightweight. Um, wall, yeah, huh. I think I was just picturing more like structured fabrics. You could do it out of either. There's really no reason why you couldn't. But with that sleeve, maybe the sleeve is why. Maybe because of the drapiness of the sleeve but these types of dresses this will just the the flare on the bottom of the skirt will flare more be more flary um if you use a more structured fabric so maybe a good blend maybe like a rayon cotton blend rayon linen blend um something along those lines would be would be better but lots of great details in here for sure um, seam binding or stretch lace for something. I guess the hem, maybe? 22 inch zipper, two hook and eyes, a half ball button, single fold bias tape. That's what you need for A and B. And then also for A, you need some elastic. B, you need a different kind of elastic. And the pants and shorts is really what they are. You need a different kind of elastic. So, so yeah, lots of notions. 4 to 12 and 14 to 22 is the size range. So actually going back to the um, jumpsuit we just looked at, wasn't that 8 to 22 on the numbers? So it's actually missing two sizes. Eight. It was. This would be small, medium, large, extra large, 2X. Was it two? I don't remember now. Anyways, these are the numbers if you want to compare them to the other one. So that puts, oh gosh, yeah, I guess we're going to use the bust. No finished garment measurements on here, but 29 and a half inch bust up to 44. Real cute, real cute for a 70s, little 70s number. Okay, cargo pants, I've said it before, cargo pants are having a moment. Okay, we're calling back to the early 2000s. Um where everyone had cargo skirts, cargo pants, cargo this, cargo that. So here we are. Men and women's unisex, um, elastic and drawstring waist and pocket variations. View B has elastic cord at the hem. So I can't say that I'm so in love with this trend enough to make, make cargo pants. I mean, this version, they really simplified it. They really just made it elastic waist pants. I do like this type of waistband on elastic waist pants though. So this is a, this is a superior pair of elastic waist pants. You don't just have the casing. Um, you get many rows of elastic, I think three of them. And then also the drawstring, which is, it's just a wet, better, more well-constructed waistband. But adding all of these pockets and things, I mean, I don't know, maybe... Maybe it, I could do it out of something very, very, very easy. Like, I mean, easy to to match tops and shoes with. I mean, easy to sew with. Um, but maybe like, oh gosh, like chambray or like a gray something, maybe even black, black something. That way it's like, if you look close, it's cargo pants, but if you don't and you just glance over, it's just black pants. I don't know. <laughs> um, I wish I, I just, it's not a matter of, of like, could I wear them? It's would I wear them? I just don't think I'm cool enough. Like, 
I just don't think I can pull it off. But that's just me. That's just me personally. Um, I want to see the back. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, yeah, you're going to have a ton of fun making all those pockets. That's for sure. Um, I do want to say that the low rise nature, it just, they're so, it makes her look so wide. Oops. It makes her look so wide. Like on a man, yes, being this low slung makes sense. But on a woman, I think we need to hang it up a little bit more just to sh give her some shape here. My goodness. Yeah, I don't know. I'm torn about these. Chambray, cotton blends, lightweight nylon, ripstop, and twill. Yeah, I could see myself using a twill, like a black twill. But you could even do like sweatshirting. That's not mentioned here, but you could do something like that. Um, you could do ponty if you want it to be really kind of slick looking. And then you just need a ton of elastic, some grommets, drawstring cord, cord stoppers, zippers, you know, tons of notions. Alphanumeric sizing again, but it's the it's the men's alphanumeric. So it's technically sizes 30 to 52, which is based off of a man's chest. <laughs> I know, it's like, what? It's pants, but we're basing off of a... I know, it's all so different. Um, all that to say, though, the hip has anywhere from... What is that? Four to six inches of ease in it, which is pretty... It's pretty good, yeah. Six would be a little bit more loose fitting. Four would be a little bit more close fitting. Okay, so now is this Laura Ashley? Yep, here's our here's our quintessential. It happens every time. Laura Ashley pattern. This is a blouse, vest, skirt, and petticoat. Um, 1980s pullover blouse has tucked front, buttoned front opening, collar with ruffle, and sleeves with gathered cap. Long sleeves are gathered into button cuffs. Short sleeves have tucks and ruffle. Unlined button vest has patched pockets, back tie belt, and top stitch trim. Tiered skirt has tucks, hemline ruffle, elastic in waistline casings. Petticoat has ruffle with lace or eyelet trim, and elastic in waistline casing. Okay, so basically... I mean, the top is very cute, very sweet, very Laura Ashley. Try and picture the vest and the skirt, or specifically the vest, not in this print. I, I'm here for vests. I don't want to get, I, I love a vest. I'm picking up all kinds of vests from the Goodwill these days um, and pairing them in all sorts of fun ways. But this vest, matchy, matchy situation also with a ditzy print, also in this baby blue. It's just, it's giving, you know, might have been kept in a bunker for a couple of decades and just popped out. And this is what I was wearing. Rescued. And this is what, you know, I had on. Um, so I would make it out of something different. Maybe a darker denim, a solid denim, something like that. But the little Peter Pan collar with the ruffles is so cute. The sleeve with the ruffle is so cute. The Swiss dot fabric they use, adorable. I would take that just as it is. And even the skirt, you know. I don't know so much about petticoats these days. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I do like the, they did it out of eyelet instead of like mesh or lace or whatever. Or whatever this was. But um, I don't, I just don't think we need our skirts to be so poofy right? Wasn't that like a status symbol or something? Like the more poofy your skirt was, the more fabric it took to make it. So therefore that showed how rich you were or something. Did I, did I learn that off of like the Gilded Age or something? <laughs> Anyways, the skirt's cute. Top's adorable. Vest, there's better vests out there, but you know, we could make this one work. Yeah, I love it in an all-matching, all-white situation. That would be really beautiful. Um, and then here's just another rando version. Pop the collar, though. <laughs> yes, she did. Right here. Yeah, I think the top's super cute. Okay, here we go. All-white version, right? Oh, that's just the petticoat. I gotcha. Well, look at me wearing a petticoat as a skirt, because I... <laughs> 
I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, there she is with jeans. Okay, that's helping a little bit. It's just this ditzy print, like, you know, kind of throwaway cotton that they're using for the vest. That's making the vest look so not cool. See? They dressed with a petticoat right there. That looks great. How is her hair getting longer? Hold on, hold on. I'm... Oh, is that just a layer? I thought she had short hair. Okay, and then you you throw me this number, and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I just think it was, um, like, hanging over her shoulder funny. But that's adorable, that little outfit. I love the top. Yeah, okay, the vest is still not, not where it's at, but... Everything else is pretty sweet. Very sweet, like Laura Ashley is known to be. Just sweet, sweet, sweet. I do appreciate the three different outfits, though. That does help. All right. Broadcloth, chambray, corduroy, cotton, cotton blends, handkerchief linen, lightweight poplin, ticking. Yeah, the, all, all of those. All of those. Plus the Swiss dots, you know, those kinds of things. Um interfacing buttons buttons elastic 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 and eyelet single edge flat lace eyelet if you're shopping for eyelet in like the craft store and you're feeling like oh this is so expensive or oh there's something i like go to goodwill and go find a 80s um bed skirt tons of eyelet tons of eyelet all over those these only come in eight sizes eight to sixteen Real skimpy on the sizes. So that's a bust of 31 and a half to 38. A hip of 40 is the highest, but it is a very loose fitting skirt. The finished, the finished measurement of the skirt at the hip is, they're not going to say, but it's going to be somewhere around the width. So that, no, that's the best. Blouse, petticoat, finish. Okay, so I think this is it. 77 inches. Somewhere around there. Because your hip to this is kind of the same, but not really. I don't know. Anyways. Not a lot of sizes. I don't know why. If they're going through the trouble of reissuing it, they should just include it. They should just fix it, give it more, more sizes. Okay. Here's a fun knit dress with sleeve variations. Knit dress with diagonal seaming allows for striped or color block variation. Dress has asymmetric hemline with long bell sleeves or sleeveless. Okay. Um, again, not rewriting, you know, not doing anything new here. This is very basic silhouette and then they've just cut it into a triangle and called it something new i bet it's real comfortable though i don't hate that version that's kind of fun and different the stripes are kind of a lot um stretch knits like cotton knits interlock and jersey and then for c they'll tell you how to cut it crosswise with crosswise striped knits they'll teach you how to cut it so that your stripes look good 8 to 16, 18 to 26 in the size range. We have one and a half inches of positive ease. So that's, that's positive. And it's a knit dress. So it's not going to be a super tight fitting, you know, suck you in kind of dress. It's going to be a little bit more like a t-shirt type of dress. Yeah, it's not memorable, right? Okay, now we have this top, Mrs. Top. Classic vest style. Classic vest style. Front tops have sleeve and length variations. View B has notch collar. B and C have ties at back. Separate pattern pieces for bust cups, which we love to see. Yeah, it is a vest style top. I, hmm... I could see myself wearing this. Maybe not so professional like that one is. Like she could wear that to like 
work, like a real professional job. Um, like if she were like the CEO or something, she could wear that. I'm picturing myself in it a little bit more like a um, less a lesser version of a corset maybe is what I'm thinking in my mind. I do like the shape of it. I do like that it's fitted. I think it would look exceptional with like a, a flared like maxi length skirt or even a mini skirt, A-line mini skirt I could see it in. Wide leg pants. Yeah, this might be a little bit of a sleeper. I, I feel like people are going to overlook this one because it's not what we're seeing a lot of right now. But this could be the next evolution of the corset is people making these vest style tops. Obviously, you could just leave the sleeves off as well and have an actual vest. So lots of options there. I don't know. I kind of, I, don't, I kind of like this. Shally, odd choice. Wouldn't make it out of Shally. Cotton blends, gingham, linen, denim, wool. Corduroy. Yeah, I can see it more heavyweight. More mid to heavyweight fabrics. Definitely not shally. Um, 8 to 16 and 18 to 26 on the size range. And the different bust cups. So, you know, it's going to fit perfectly in that area. Um, depending on your bust cup size, it's anywhere from 3.5 to 5.5 inches. The waist is pretty fitted too. Um, you wouldn't think the waist would affect the cup size or the cup size would affect the waist finish, but it does. So three to four and a half inches in the waist of ease. So yeah, she's close fitted for sure, but I don't know. I kind of just really like it. I think it's unique and different enough and I just, I can see myself wearing it. I don't know. I don't know. Definitely more of like a basic, like a layering piece. Like I wouldn't make it out of a print. I'd make it so that I can wear it like over, over dresses or as like a standalone, not a standalone, I'd be half naked, but as like a, as a piece to wear with maybe like a crazier printed skirt. You know what I mean? More, more basic, I would picture it for myself, I think. All right, now here's the corduroy, I'm not the corduroy, here's the cargo skirt. Um, this is going to give a lot of you maybe PTSD from when you were younger. Um, here's Raven's version. She made it look about as sweet as she possibly can, given that she, I think, lives in Alabama? She's a Southern girl for sure. She, she, she really did the least, you know, in terms of what you could do with this, the bubble hem, the elastic corded hem. You remember all of that, right? From like the Spice Girls. Sporty Spice would have freaked over <laughs> being able to get this skirt pattern. Um, cargo style pull-on skirt with link hemline and pocket variation. Skirt A has a bubble hem. View B has elastic cords at hemline. So, Yeah. You won't catch me in an elastic corded hemline anytime soon. The bubble hem now, the bubble hem, there's a place for a bubble hem. Okay, it's not Target, right? I wouldn't wear it to Target. But if you have like a teenager who's going to like a formal or semi-formal or prom and they want a two-piece set, the bubble hem skirt is perfect for that. Perfect for that. Um, and then as Raven illustrated, you can make this kind of sweeter version of it. She included the, pa the patch pockets and it didn't, didn't scream cargo. Um, but you could, you could go very sporty or very classy or very dressy. This one really kind of captures it all. But yeah, I mean, that's it. That's how you wear it. That's how you style it. A little baby tee, baby tank top, and then these crazy platforms. That's the look. That's the look. That's it. Um, okay, so, oh, not, not the first fabric suggestion being freaking Tupioni. 
Oh my gosh. Wow. Was not expecting that. Okay. So yeah, let's just throw in a Dupioni option there. That really for the bubble hem exclusively, I would think. Um, yeah. Not lightweight nylon rip stop for sure. This version C you could make out of anything from denim to chambray to twill, chino, um, any of those types of fabrics you could use for that. Okay, elastic, elastic, drawstring cords, snaps, grommets. Yeah, your usual like kind of heavy duty um, notions for, for cargo type stuff. 6 to 14 and then 6, and then maybe they overlap. 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22, I think. Um, your waist is elastic and the hip is going to be pretty wide too. So yeah. You're just going to fit the elastic to your waist. So pick the measurement closest to that, I would guess. Really easy to fit this skirt. But see, Ravens is like a cute little dotted chambray or something. Okay, now we have scrubs. I can't tell you the first thing about scrubs. So I'm going to skip that one. This is another Laura Ashley petite and lined jacket and dress. 1980s jacket and dress, princess seamed jacket with stand collar, has welt pockets, long sleeves with gathered caps and cuffs. Dress with sweetheart neckline, has lapped back bodice, shoulder straps, side zipper opening, and full gathered skirt with patch pockets. Okay, again, ignore fabric choice. Just try to ignore fabric choice. The jacket sleeve is very 80s. It's only because the sleeve opening, the arm side, is so tall. Like, from your shoulder here to where the side seam ends, that's way longer than normal. Normally, it would stop, like, around here. Um, so that's what's making this look so kind of funky. Um, but also just quintessential 80s. So anytime I'm like struggling with unseeing fabric choice, I'll just picture it in denim. So picture this in a light chambray, right? Picture the dress and maybe a darker chambray. And maybe you can visualize this a little bit better. This dress though, 10 out of 10, I'd wear that nonstop. I'd, I want to like the jacket. I could actually see the dress out of chambray, linen, something along those lines. And then what about this out of like a, an eyelet or some kind of like borderline sheer situation happening? Yeah. Can we get behind that? That'd be kind of cool. The dress is everything. Oh, perfect fit. I'd leave off the pockets, I think. But you can't go wrong with a sweetheart neckline and a princess seam. You just can't. It's going to look good on everybody. Okay, again, I know, very linebackery, okay? But that, it's the 80s. This is an 80s reproduction. That's what was happening. Um, but these oversized broad shoulder things are still being worn today, just not in this weird strawberry fabric. Picture it in something a lot more plain dressed down, not in a heel, not in a high pony with the thing wrapped around the hair tie, like very cash, a lot more casual than this. Oh, and they didn't show the cross back on the model, but that's what the back looks like. I love this dress. All right. So they're recommending baby cord, which is like corduroy where the whale is very, very small. Um, chambray, cotton blends, crisp cotton, damask, broadcloth, linen, PK, polished cotton, seersucker. Yeah, I can see it in all of those things. And also adding um, sateen. I could see it in that as well. Um, and then for there's lining fabrics recommended. Interfacing. Okay. Buttons and not that many notions. 8 to 16, 18 to 26 on the size range. So why are they doing this one in a full size range and the other one they aren't? Did they just accidentally leave off 18 to 26? I'm going to guess yes. That's what I think happened. There's a problem with the website and it just forgot 18 to 26. 
That makes the most logical sense to me. The bus is pretty fitted here. So let's look at that. It's got three and a half, four and a half inches of ease in the bust. Eh, that feels like kind of a lot. I was going to go closer to two. Um, and the waist has 10 inches of ease, but maybe because that's including the wrap or maybe that's the jacket. Yeah, this is all a little bit misleading, I think. I think these might be the numbers for the jacket and not for the dress. Maybe. There's definitely not 10 inches of ease in the waist on that dress, for sure. Okay. Next. Knit Top and Pants by Brandy Joan. Wow, they really buried her this time. Normally, she's like one of the first two things you see. Oversized sweats by Brandy Joan. Knit top has dropped shoulder long sleeves with top stitching and sleeve and hem bands. Pull on drawstring pants have side pockets and pin tunks center front. Okay. I mean, sweatpants with stilettos. I don't know about that, but it's your kind. Maybe that's why it's a little bit basic. It's a little bit basic. So we've just got this. Honestly, the neck band is not, is it supposed to stand up like that or supposed to lay flat? I don't know. The pin tuck on sweatpants is pretty cool. Um, but it is, are these supposed to be like dressy? Cause I, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. Not a stiletto, maybe a wedge. I don't know this. Yeah. Okay. I understand why they buried her now. I think they're thinking that's probably not going to resonate with a lot of people, the styling. But if we want to, okay, let's, let's, okay, let's keep an open mind. Okay. Let's look at it and let's zoom in so we can't see. Well, that's going to be too much of a zoom. Oh boy. I'm just all over the place. So pretend that you cannot see her feet and let's pretend she's got on sneakers, which I get it. That's so like been there, done that. I know. I know. But the, the cool thing about this that you can't really tell from here is that the sleeve has actually a lot of, see this here? It has a little bit of styling detail to it. It has the same pen tuck as the pants. And there is a faux, um, what's this thing called? A fly, a faux fly. That's kind of cool. Right? So it does have some redeeming qualities to it. Here's the back. The fit is fitted. You know, looks good on her. A little tight in the calf. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. But I, I'm, I saw this here on the side. I saw that sleeve. And I was like, you know, it is kind of different. But just styled really not, not it for me. So cotton knit, French terry, ponty knit, sweatshirt fleece. Yeah, maybe if she made it out of a ponty, that would have been better. Maybe that is a ponty. I don't know. I don't know. No, still, I'm not wearing pointy toed stiletto heels anywhere. Even if I offset it with the comfort of a sweatsuit. Still not happening. Um, elastic, drawstring cord, grommets, extra small to extra large. Um, none of this, I guess the hip is probably the only thing that matters on the pant. And that has, yeah, two and a half, three and a half inches of ease. So not a ton, um, there, a close fitted sweatpant for sure. All right. And then here's Brandy's other pattern. This will also be our last one. So, bias cut special occasion dress by Brandy Joan has side ruching, cowl neckline, and high slit. Now, I have said this a thousand times. If it's your first video, you're here for the first time, if you watched any of these from me before, I am obsessed with bias cut. I'm telling you, no matter, no matter what your body looks like, bias cut will look good on you. There is something magical, no matter how fitted this is, if you've not worn anything this fitted in years, something magical about bias cut, especially like a silk or something, the way that it just hugs your curves just enough and then lets go at just the right places. 
there it's just magical absolutely magical so if you've never tried a bias cut dress head to the store that has one somewhere try it on in the dressing room and stand back and admire yourself because you're going to look amazing um so yeah this baby blue is not the best color for her i don't think i also can't tell what's happening here is that it almost looks like two separate pieces but in the back it definitely doesn't i think it might be too long through here but i like the cowl this might just be too small on her all around, actually, because I think the cowl is supposed to be a little bit, you know, the drapes are supposed to drape, um, and they're not. So this might be just a little bit too small on her. But yeah, beautiful gown, for sure. Oh, there's supposed to be some side gathers, too. Did we even notice those? I didn't. I didn't. This cut back on the shoulder is really pretty. Yeah, where are these gathers happening? Right? They're not as obvious as it would seem. Certainly not like that. Hmm. Shally, Charmeuse, Crepe, Stable Knits. Stable Knits is an odd choice. Um... 4 to 12, and then 14 to 22. That might be the entire Mrs. range. 29 and a half bust up to 44. And what is that? Three and a half inches of ease in the bust. Five and a half in the waist. Three and a half in the hip. Five and a half in the waist seems like a lot. but it is definitely hourglass shape. So maybe the bias cut helps with that. What it, kind of fabric is this requiring? Not a lot, three yards. I'm shocked by that. I don't know how she's pulling that off because these pieces are all so long and you have to cut them on the bias. You must be cutting them single layer. Ugh, no thank you. No thank you. <laughs> okay. So that is it. What do we think about McCall's spring? I think I had a lot more good things to say than bad things, which doesn't always happen. Um, I do really love, what were they? The romper I loved, the idea of this I loved, the jumpsuit I loved. This, for some reason, is sticking out to me. This, I kind of had a soft spot for. Um, and this as well. So that's, that's kind of a lot. I won't go, I won't not buy all of those. I don't think. Um, but we'll see what stays with me, what sticks in my mind, you know, what, what really stands out in like a week when I go do the shopping at Joanne, like what am I, what do I remember most? And those are the ones that I will grab. So, but I want to know what you guys think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, of your favorites, what stood out to you. If you agree or disagree with anything I had to say, let me know. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. I will see you all very soon. Bye.